Good morning. I am building the fire in my old Vestal stove in the garage. Figured I'd bring y'all along. Cause I gotta get some work done today on the chainsaw that I will be sending to Aaron Lynch. I just saw his video where he got the uh, Husqvarna 266 SE. And he mentioned that some people thinking about having him build a saw, blah, blah, blah. But you never know until it's on your bench. He may have been talking about me. <laughs> uh, so I need to get that thing going. The wood that I'm using to start this here fire, this is uh, sour wood. And sour wood gets mistaken a lot for hickory. But of course it's not. It's not hickory because it's sour wood. Looks like it though. It looks like, man, what's, you know, that's one crooked hickory. And, um, and then some pine. Now, by far, the best way that I have ever figured out in my life the best way to build a fire is by using striker fires. I'll let you see that in a second. But these guys, if you haven't ever seen them or used them, figure it out. So they come in big sticks like this. You're supposed to be able to strike them. But it usually doesn't work very well. There we go. Put it out. I don't actually want it to burn. So, but what I do is I take these, basically, and I break them in threes. And so from one stick, I get enough to make three fires. And uh, they're excellent. So, let's take a look at my Vestal here. So, I got this to replace my uh, barrel stove. And um, I did a video on the barrel stove of how it sucked. And it did. I had a double barrel stove and it just had air leaks everywhere. Uh, even, I mean, it was just, <laughs> that is, let's talk about this for a second. The barrel stove is the cheapest stove that you can actually get in brand new form. That's why people get them. Um, and, you know, let's talk about they put out a lot of heat. Well, mine put out a lot of heat for sure uh, whenever I had a good fire going. Absolutely, it put out a lot of heat. But in order to get a good fire going, I had to tend it quite a bit. And um, I did not like my barrel stove. Didn't like it a bit. And uh, to keep the fire going, I just had to babysit it all the time. And now I did have a problem, and that is my stack was too short. My smokestack, my chimney, my flue, whatever you want to call it. It was too short, absolutely. It went outside of my garage and terminated within a couple feet. And uh, so... Yeah, that's a problem. You're not getting a good draw like you should be getting. I understand that. But you know how I fixed it? I didn't change my chimney. <laughs> I should. I need to. I really need to. But I didn't change that at all. You know what I did to fix my barrel stove? I purchased a real stove. That's it. That's it. Barrel stoves, you can like them. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Me, on the other hand not liking my barrel stove setup seemed to hurt a lot of people's feelings. <laughs> I mean, people were pissed. You're an idiot. You're using wet wood. <laughs> Your chimney's not long enough. I get it. My chimney's not long enough. 
But you know what? All I had to do to fix the problems that I was having with that barrel stove was to buy a real stove. That's it. I didn't do nothing else. <laughs> Let's check on the fire here. We're going. But uh, yeah, I usually just leave that open like that. I can actually, once I get a good fire going on in here, I can close this down and it'll hold It'll hold a fire. The barrel stove would never hold a fire. You constantly had to feed it. Constantly had to feed it. And then as soon as the fire's out, all that heat's gone too. You know, it didn't hold any heat. And you know, everybody's like, yeah, well, all you gotta do is this, line the whole thing with brick. Well, I, I that's kind of expensive. You know, those bricks are not cheap. Okay, so, but you know, yeah, I guess you could do that. Other people were saying, um, you can uh, weld about 14 tubes going through the barrel on each barrel and then put a fan, modify this bracket to blow air through those tubes and it'll be perfect. And I'm like, uh, the amount of time and effort to do that? Why? This stove is awesome and it pay, I, I paid like 150 bucks for it. Call me crazy, but <laughs> I mean, you know, it it's just absurd. Um why spend thirty hours modifying a barrel stove to perform as it should, right? And the material that you would have to purchase all said and done you know we're talking you're probably going to have two to four hundred dollars in the barrel stove just buy an old used stove from the 70s for 150 bucks bada bing there you go <laughs> but you know some people really like those stoves and that's fine you can you can like those all you want i don't I tried it. I used it for about three winters. Uh, yeah, it was pointless to me. So, cheers to any of you guys out there who think that your barrel, barrel stove is amazing and that I'm just an idiot that doesn't know what I'm doing. I'm using wet wood. I don't know how to build a fire. I'm just a, an idiot. I'm just poor old sack of shit. I just can't do anything right. You know, that's why my barrel stove sucked. It wasn't because barrel stoves in general are subpar, inferior to a real stove. <laughs> no, no, no. Every house should have a barrel stove inside it. And every garage should have a double barrel stove because they're the best things out there. It doesn't make any sense why people would purchase a real stove. It's not like a real stove is actually better, higher quality than a barrel stove, a, a, a device that you go out and you get for $10 that used to hold oil and you are modifying it. It's about freaking 16 or 18 gauge steel. So it doesn't hold heat at all. And whenever it does, it warps and pings and tings. Yeah, sure, you get a barrel stove, fill it up with sand, weld tubes going through it, spend 30 hours of your precious time. Let me tell you guys, I don't work unless I'm making money. And the, or it's something that I enjoy doing, right? Modifying a barrel stove would not be on that list. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just a fool who doesn't know what he's doing. And that is the reason why my barrel stove sucked and I had to go and buy a $150 real stove. The pipe is exactly the same as it was with the barrel stove. Well, I mean, I have more pipe right here because the barrel stove was taller. 
As a matter of fact, let's go look. It's, it's pulling too. We got fire going now. Let's go have a look. Let's go outside. I know I need to fix it, so don't tell me you need to fix that. It's a fire hazard or whatever. But that's my setup. It's temporary, and that's what's going on. Had the exact same setup whenever I was using a barrel stove. And you know what fucking sucked? The barrel stove. You know what works like a charm? The real stove. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot who doesn't know what I'm doing. So if you guys would like to see that original video, I will put a link to that video, um, either in the description or something. And it was me saying why barrel stoves suck. Or you can just look up the video, why barrel stoves suck. Um, it's under my other channel, which is called Bodie Pennington. It's just my name. Subscribe to that. I got a lot of good content on there too. Very different than my chainsaw channel though. I'll do cooking videos, uh, construction videos, all kinds of stuff. But uh, yeah, it'd be cool if you guys went over there and subscribed to that one as well and started watching those videos. And hopefully that channel will make some more money too. Ah! But this has been my Vestal Stove video.